Hello and welcome to the first of this two-part feature where we're going to be looking at uh, some uses of contact player and orchestral sample libraries within a typical music production workflow. My name's Tosh and um, what you were just listening to was a little piece that I'd thrown together using Ableton and the contact player and um, the Albion libraries from Spitfire Audio. And we're going to be having a, a closer look at all of those aspects over the course of this, this piece. If you work in film scoring or commercial composition, you've probably heard of uh, Native Instruments Contact and Spitfire Audio, perhaps their Albion orchestral sample libraries. If, like me, you're more a music production, band recording, that side of things, you know, it's likely you may not be familiar with these products. So I'll give you a bit of background on them. Now, Native Instruments Contact, that's their flagship sampler. Um, there's a couple of versions of it. There's the full version, uh, Contact, and then there's Contact Player, which is available for free. Now, the big difference between them really is in the name. Contact Player is a sample player, whereas Contact itself is a full modular sampling system. With Contact, you can create complex instruments. You've got scripting. You've got um, the ability to route audio through all kinds of effects and create unique instruments, whereas with the player, you kind of get what you're given. Having said that, with the free player, you've got a huge library of third-party samples um, available, and this ranges from anything like you know, obscure Indian instruments to beautifully sampled uh, classic synths. Um, so a whole lot of guys out there are creating instruments for use with the contact player, and the contact player has a lot of um, flexibility built into it, which allows you to create something unique without having to have the full system. Probably worth noting, though, that not all libraries are available for Contact Player, and certainly in the Spitfire audio range, most of their libraries are available on Contact Player, but there are a handful that aren't. So um, over at Spitfire Audio's homepage, you can see there's a whole load of libraries available, um, you know, covering all sorts of different instruments. We're going to be featuring a bit of the Albion libraries, which are uh, full orchestral sample libraries, and they come in different flavours, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. If we now go over to Native Instruments, this is where you get your contact player, or if you already have um, contact, you can use that with these libraries. If you don't, then this is probably where you're going to go and get the free download for contact player. Um, very simple, just click on that. You probably have to register and you get a link sent by email. You're also going to need this application, Native Access, um, which you need to install, and that kind of manages all your sample libraries for Contact and Contact Player. Assuming you've decided to go for one of these libraries, what you'll need to do is after doing that install process, um, you'll be sent a link saying everything's okay on your email, and then you can download via the library manager. You can choose where you want to install, change install location there, seeing as I've already installed this, I don't get the option to do that. Um, and then you just have to wait however long, depending your in, on how good your internet connection is, um, to get these downloaded. Now, we're going to look at Albion, and these are big libraries. Uh, I've got Albion 1 and Albion 5 installed. Albion 1 was about 54 gig, and I think Albion 5 was maybe 45. So you need double that in terms of disk space because when they download they um, copy themselves and unzip and things like that so you need extra space on your hard drive obviously to accommodate this now you can install these also on external hard drives and this is something that's quite common um, if you're using a lot of sample libraries from whatever manufacturer it's quite handy to have them on an external drive so once you've gone through that whole process of downloading installing and registering your product you should be good to go um, and then it's just a case of calling up your DAW software and loading up a plugin. So here we've got an example with Ableton Live, and I've installed uh, Contact Player as both AU and VST format. Um, and getting it up and running is very simple. I'll just find Contact Native Instruments. There we go. Just drop an example of the Contact Player into a channel strip. And we're away, and this is the contact player. And what you see here is a blank player, and this is your library here, which shows you, you know, the products you've got registered and installed. And once you go through that, um, registering your serial process with native access, uh, your uh, libraries will appear here. Now you can see I've got a few different ones here. I've got um, some horn samples, and then I've got the Spitfire Albion libraries. I've got Albion One and Albion Five, which are you can think of them as 
very different colours of the orchestral palette. Now, in terms of getting an instrument up and running, it couldn't be easier. You can either just drag and drop uh, an instrument from this list here into the player, and then it should load up. Now, bearing in mind, these are big libraries, and the reason they're big is because they give you a huge range of control over articulations, mic positions, things like that. So it will take uh, you know a bit of time to load, but hopefully not too much, and it depends on your system, obviously. So here's a string patch loaded in. So there you go, your basic string patch, um, and that's the interface that controls it over here. And this gives us access to all manner of parameters, including articulations, the positioning of mics, and control over the way that the, uh, the sort of expression, if you like, of the, um, the players. Now, that's a simple example, just dropping one instrument in. We'll now load up a patch that has multiple instruments, and I'll show you some of the routing that I used to, to set that up. Okay, so here we've got uh, another example, a bit more of a complex setup where we've got multiple instances of instruments within a single player. So if I just uh, show you here, we've got um, a brass section, some woodwinds, strings, and um, I think that's a, a cymbal sample setup. And these, uh, this is. This shows you some of the different interfaces available through the Albion libraries. Um, you kind of got your standard player here and then this EDN DNA interface, which I'll talk more about in the, um, the second part of the feature. Uh, but for now, uh, just consider that these are individual instruments all sitting within a single player. So it's like a multi-timbral instrument. So what I've done here is I've created um, one instance of my contact player on this channel. Uh, and within that player, I've got multiple instruments. So I've set up a series of MIDI channels here, which all feed into that one player. So you send your MIDI to contact, and then you choose within that which of the contact slots, if you like, this is sending MIDI to. And what this means, it's quite a convenient way of controlling, uh, you know, a multiple range of instruments. So if I play this, you can hear we've got our string section in there. A string bass and a bit of brass and a kind of assembly patch. Now, a good thing with using Ableton as well is that you can set up these clips and you can do things like change the articulation. By well, articulation, I mean you know the style that they're played in. So here, this has got spiccato. Pizzicato. So this is just one particular way of working, um, sending all MIDI to a single instrument. And one of the things I like about doing that is um, you can do things like put an overall effect. So I could have a, a kind of affected orchestra sound. Here I've got a, a Moog filter, a UA Moog filter. So, you know, you can play around with things like that and do come up with some interesting little effects. So that's one particular workflow, having multiple MIDI tracks feed a single instance of the contact player, which itself contains multiple instruments. I quite work, like working that way, um, but it's equally valid to have individual instances of the contact player, you know, on several different tracks, each having their own instrument. And then you can do your routing through the DAW software and set up your submixes accordingly. Okay, so here's the um, piece that we opened up with, and uh, as an example, it's got a combination of orchestral and electronic elements there. So I'm using Albion 5 Tundra mainly, and I've got some beats and bass lines thrown in from Ableton. Now, I've been using Ableton Live for this demo, but this will work in any host, uh, as long as it's compatible with VST, AU or AX format plugins in both Windows or Mac. Um, that about wraps it up for this particular piece. Um, the idea is to give you an overview of 
contact player ecosystem, if you like, and some of the libraries available for it, and how you can integrate that into your door. In the next part of this feature, we'll be looking more closely at the Albion libraries and giving you a, a taste of some of the unique sounds these libraries have to offer, as well as showing you things like articulation control using key switching and MIDI mapping and other things like that. Okay, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.